when I uh, when yeah. I tuned in, it was you and Kendrick Perkins arguing about the Lakers, and he was wearing a turtleneck and a blazer, dressing like Steve yeah. Jobs, and, and you were out there dressing like a member of Jodeci. I don't know what was going on. I do. I, listen, I understand what you were saying with shout that out Lakers to comment. Shout out, shout out, shout yeah. out to, shout out to Jode, Yeah, shout out to Jodeci one time. That Lakers argument, though, uh, just for people that are listening, you were calling them a contender, <laughs> so and he was saying that you're not a con- they're not a contender. Yada yada yada. I get what but you yeah, were saying. Just, they, yeah, we do this thing. All I was saying is we do this thing where we overreact with the Lakers every time, right? They, 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 they win a couple games and like everyone's like, man, they're back. They're gonna win the championship. They lose a couple games. Everyone's like, man, like what's going on? Is it Darvin Ham? Is Darvin Ham? Hey, Palinka, I don't know, man. He's gotta make some moves. But then like six months ago, they're like, yo, Darvin Ham had a great, you know, great season last year. They went to the conference finals in his first year as a coach. Uh, they they come back. That Palinka had a great summer. They returned all their assets and added other good role pieces. The Lakers are loaded up. Blah 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 blah. And it's just like, bro, we're so up and down with them. And no, they haven't played to the level of what they're supposed to with I see on the floor that a record should be a lot better. But that's low key the rest of the NBA for the exception with the with the exception of like four teams. The Clippers are just now figuring it out. And I know they got James later, so they have an excuse. But still, they you know, they're just now getting into form. And like the Warriors still haven't figured it out yet. And like Memphis is a mess. And the Kings are still pretty damn solid. Uh, but you know, they're even coming off. Uh, probably a slower start than they thought they were even going to come out to. They've, they've cleaned it up now. They're playing some really good basketball now. But well, here's the thing. I understand the point you were making about the Lakers is that you know the last time everyone got together and played in a tournament like the end season tournament, they won. And we know that when you know the lights come on, like in the playoffs last year, LeBron and AD went healthy. They do kind of take care of business. Yeah. So I do feel like I understand what you were saying. And it was like a rivalry game the other day with the Clippers, and that you talk about the Clippers how they've been hot lately. And the Lakers, they showed up for that game. Showed up against the Thunder last night. So I get what you're saying. And there is no trade right now that's going to make the Lakers. Bro, you know, last year, the, like, they, I was saying, last year there was that trade that actually like changed their whole season. I don't know if they need to change their whole season trade right now, even though the record's not good. You know, I, I a couple tweaks here and there maybe, or a couple guys get healthy. Yeah. They, there, there's nobody on the market right now that screams, we got to do this deal. Like, especially if we're talking about no deal gets done without Austin Reeves being involved, like without any like actual player. Like, bro, if you just go throw away another young, talented player, like that you kind of, you know, found and like really grew yourself as a project player into what he is now, Austin Reeves. Uh, I mean, you got to be getting something back that not only is going to be good, he's going to play well, but he also is going to want to resign there and like retire there and be in the future there. And like, that, like, and right now you got options of like Zach Levine and his monster contract. You have, uh, Pascal Siakam, who would have to resign, which and he just wouldn't, he wouldn't make sense for the Lakers, anyways. They have Rui and they have, you no, know, no, no. Vanderbilt. That's, that's they why, have so many well, guys he, that are like, yeah. Well, well, a couple of those would probably be in the move. They would have to move Achi, probably have to move Achi Mori, have to move Reeves, uh, a pick, maybe even Christie uh, for a guy like Pascal Siakam. So there are, there are options there. You, you, you know, you could throw 80 LeBron and Pascal. I don't like their shooting. I don't know what Pascal does for the spacing of LeBron and AD. I love Pascal as a player, but he has to like strategically be fit somewhere. I think for the, his best benefit, you know, for his uh, for the best of himself. And you know, I, he's an All Star caliber player, no doubt. I just think you have to, you know, really be careful here with the Lakers. You have a, a sound team, man. Like, the, the roster is pretty solid, bro. Again, I just think we have this thing where we overreact whatever they do. If they win, the whole world's, they're, they're winning the championship. The Lakers, da 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 They lose four or five of my, God, Jesus. It's, it's like there's a an earthquake. Everyone, you know, Darvin Ham alluded to it already. He said multiple times, I'm tired of everybody living and dying with every win or loss. He's like, it's nuts, man. Calm down. It's a journey. There's a lot of teams going through what they're going through right now. And I already went over that. I went through that. But like, you know, this is, at the end of the day, hey, listen, last year, their season was looking murkier than this. They brought in some new assets and it worked. So we know it works. And then they've only added better players. So like, this does work. I don't know whose fault it has been. Maybe it's everyone's fault to go around. Okay, why don't we all just take it? But they're not as good as they should be but they have it there. And we've seen that because they wouldn't beat the Clippers and they wouldn't beat the Thunder. These are like the best teams in the NBA right now. You can say whatever you want about the Lakers and how they're having an unsuccessful season, which I agree. They're playing way below their level of play. I agree. The Lakers have not performed to the level that they should be performing. With that being said, they are still a team that in a seven-game series, you don't want to see. 
You could say, you know, whatever you want, but you got to beat LeBron James in 80 in that team twice. I mean, I meant four times out of seven times, uh, out of seven games. That's a mission. Four to seven times, you know, that's a mission, bro. You got to really clearly be better than them. This is a team that when the lights were on and the pressure's on in the in-season tournament, everybody had to go get it. They went and got it. That's all I'm saying. So, like, now everyone's like, the Lakers got to do something. They got to blow it up. They're, 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 they're this, they're that. Okay, but then, like, a month ago when they won the in-season tournament, everybody was like, yo, you know what, man? Like, relax. Fall back. Lakers are fine. Do I think they could be better? Yes, but it's with the role players. Like, they could add a player, sign a player. Maybe this guy plays more. Maybe that. Nothing major. Nothing with Reeves involved. Nothing with AD or LeBron, obviously, involved. Uh, you keep some of the... Torian Prince, I like him there. You know, you, you keep some of the core guys there. Everyone else, if you can, like, add something pretty solid, I don't think there's no harm in that, but I, I, I like where the Lakers will be, man. I, I, they just gotta... They gotta play better so they're not in this fucking... You know, that play-in. I think what a lot of people are looking for, though, is maybe some consistency with the starting lineup. Obviously, last night, they they brought together the D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves starting lineup again. Uh, yeah, they it did. Worked. And, it did you work know, for just They've thrown out some wacky lineups with, you know, just a bunch of power forwards and not, no shooters and no creators sometimes and things like that. So did you like the D'Angelo Russell back in the starting lineup for them? Um, I do sometimes. It's it's really dependent on how D'Lo plays, man. You know, D'Lo is a very talented offensive player, so much so that sometimes it only, it, it can like get into his own way because like, you know, he'll come down, no pass off a pick and roll Pulled, pulled up midi with like 18 on the clock. And he could hit those because he's got a nasty midi. That's why he shoots them. It's just like a time in score and like when to shoot it, when not. You know, uh, learning how to still be a pick and roll asset, but also like learning how to really play off the ball better. That way LeBron can do his thing and be LeBron and AD. These guys are both going to be shooting the ball just about every other time. Can you coexist amongst them? Can you coexist? Austin Reeves, he's a scorer too, man. He's putting it up. So it can't be like, all right, I get it. It's my turn. No, you're the guy that just, you got to be out there, bro. You'll just have success from being out there. Just do the right things. You might not get to play like D-Lo, D-Lo, and we know you're capable of playing like D-Lo, D-Lo. I've seen you put up those numbers. I've seen you be an all-star. I'm not questioning how good you are as a player. You're nice as fuck. I love D-Lo's game, bro. But for you to be successful right now in this team, on this team, with this role, you have to just coexist more, I think, on a consistent basis of like, don't worry about your scoring, man. Some nights you're going to have eight. Some nights you're going to have 22. The ball will find you. You don't need to force anything. Those three kind of have to be the most aggressive guys. And especially those two, just coexist, bro. And then just try to be as solid as you can on defense and be like a point guard. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, that's kind of what he has to do here. If he does that, D'Lo's great for them. When he wants to be a little bit more aggressive, not that he's not capable, it just... it. You could see it with LeBron and, and AD and, and Reeves. It kind of can get in the way of things of like the whole flow of the team for the good of the team. So like sometimes he just, he might have to sacrifice for this team to, to, to do it. And I've seen him do it on nights. He does it like last night. They, they look good. So I know, he, I know it's there because D loves a smart, bro. He's a smart high Q too. Sometimes all his gifts go against him, bro. Cause like he has the, the, the capability to do great things in a game. Whether that's consistent or not, that's a different conversation. But he has the capability to do them because we've all seen D'Lo just cut up, right? So I think sometimes you want him to just do a little less when you're with LeBron and AD on the court. Yes, right? just a, yes, yeah, like yeah, just do a little less. It's not, and I hate saying less. I, I don't like saying less. It's just like just play, just go play a game. Don't worry about like you getting all right. AD shot it, he missed. LeBron shot it, he missed. Reef shot it, made it. All right, my turn. I got the ball. I'm I'm pulling up this time. Don't like just just play, just play. Still get off it. Move, cut. You're going to get yours just by being out there. Just by being out there on the floor by default, you're going to get open shots and you're going to get your opportunities and you're nice as shit. You'll have your moments where you have it in transition and you can pull that three. Like, you can go for it every once in a while. I still got to play ball. I'm just saying, just you got to like, do you know what I mean? Just No, ease. for sure. And you, you, you said something to me actually in the beginning of the year. You told me, you said, they're going to miss Schroeder and people don't give Schroeder enough credit of how good he was as a backup point guard last year. They'll throw him in, and he was really good on defense, and he played really well with LeBron. And they did yeah, he, miss a guy he, like that. Schroeder, what Schroeder did for the Lakers is a totally different role than what he does for Team Germany. Okay, when he's, when he's with Germany, that guy is, you know, scoring, dicing, slicing, you know, you name it, right? When he was with the Lakers last year, he said, I'm going to pick up full court. I'm going to bother people and be a high-energy guy. And on offense, I'll pick and choose my aggressive moments, but I'm just going to be out here. I'm just going to exist. I don't. I, some nights I'll shoot four shots. Some nights I'll shoot 14 shots. Some nights I'll shoot 12. Some nights I'll shoot three shots. 
He didn't give a fuck. He just played, bro. And he was, he like simplified it because Schroeder wasn't trying to average a number that year because he's always averaged like 16. He's always put up numbers. He was at that point with them, you know, after the whole thing happened and Boston didn't work out and he's with the Lakers for a couple years. He's sitting here. Schroeder's like, you know what? I'm going to buy into this role, bro. I'm going to do exactly what they want me to do. I'm going to do energy guy. And I'm going to coexist and I'm just going to find my way. And it worked out for him, bro. Now, D'Lo gets paid much more. So I'm not saying he has to be that. And that's not his game either way. He's not going to pick up full court and turn guys. That's not his, it's not his wheelhouse. He don't have the capability to do that athletically. But D'Lo is um, also, I think, a more gifted of a score and offensive player. So I think his role will be a little bit, it's, it's higher than that. It's still though, to your point, what you said, he's got to ease into it and just coexist like Schroeder did. It's a great, it is a good example. 